hello everyone and welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well guys in this video we are going to discuss about the last minute preparation strategy and must know things for your upcoming gen c exam for cognizant so if you are also going to appear for your exam soon make sure that you watch this video before attempting because there are a lot of important details and a kind of uh, formula guide that i am going to cover in this video so that just by watching this video you will have your mindset ready before the exam okay so before starting the video if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet because i regularly upload these kinds of helpful videos also there is a complete playlist on cognizant pack make sure to check that too if you haven't checked it yet let's start with our today's topic which is cognizant uh, gen c exam overview so first of all let's understand the gen c exam overview first round was your cognizant uh, communication assessment which we have all completed and then you have reached to round two in round two you are currently undergoing through this phase which is aptitude assessment in aptitude assessment we are going to further discuss now that uh, what are the uh, what are the sections that are there once your aptitude is done then you will be having your technical assessment okay and this is like one of your elimination rounds like basically aptitude assessment should not be considered as an elimination round this is one single round only so even though if you perform well or bad in aptitude assessment you will definitely get the link for te technical assessment okay but this overall round is your elimination round which means if you clear clear this round two then only you will be moving on to the next round which is a technical interview hope it is clear let's quickly move on to the next round which is your uh, apt and tech assessment so now we are going to talk in detail about this one so see as i told you right now we are going through apt assessment and what they have mentioned is there will be quantitative aptitude and uh, analytical and logical okay but what we have noticed it uh, recently that they have started giving gamified aptitude questions so we will also discuss in this video what are those and how can you be prepared for it so first of all let's see the numerical ability topic so i have taken all the topics which are told by uh, cognizant okay these are all the topics you can take the screenshot or uh, pause the video and watch it i'm not going to go through each topic okay but we are now going to start discussing the last minute preparation strategy before that uh, these uh, as per the like recent assessments which has happened we have noticed these are the mostly asked topics from which the questions are coming okay and usually 30 questions will be there uh, uh, around 30 questions will be there on quantitative aptitude and you know you will get questions out from these topics but these are not the only ones as i told you the complete syllabus is this one okay this one which we have already seen okay now let's see how can you be prepared for your uh, cognizant last minute aptitude assessment okay so see the last minute aptitude uh, preparation what it is including is first of all those important topics from which mostly the questions are coming okay so let's see first question uh, first topic is percentage and profits and loss right so these are some important formulas that you must know the percentage formula is value upon total value multiplied by 100 okay next is your increase or decrease in percentage so whenever you have a question where the increase or decrease in the percentage is asked okay so what you have to do is you have to, in order to calculate the new value you need your original value multiplied by one plus or minus percentage change divided by 100 depends upon the uh, like profit or loss okay that is if it is increased then you have to add plus if you have if it is decreased then you have to add minus and guys if you are not aware we have already solved all these questions in all these preparation videos okay uh, we have taken all uh, topics we have taken questions from all the topics so i hope like whoever has solved the questions from those topics or those videos must already be aware of all these formulas because we have all discussed all of it there next is your profit and loss okay so in profit this is the simple formula that we have selling price minus cost price loss formula is cost price minus selling price next up we have profit percentage so for profit percentage what we do is profit upon cost price multiplied by 100 and loss percentage is loss upon cost price multiplied by 100 these are the simple formulas for profit and loss next is your successive percentage change okay so if you are asked uh, to calculate that what is your net change going to be net change going to be is your a plus b plus a b by 100 and for successive increases or decreases by a percent and b percent moving on and then there is this one example i have taken for just so that you understand it in a clear way see if the price of a shirt is increased by 20 percent and then again by 10 percent this is called as successive increment okay or successive increasing which means initially it was increased once and then again it was increasing again it is increasing so how you will calculate it using successive percentage formula so a plus b plus a into b divided by 100 which is going to give you 32 percent hope it is clear let's quickly now move on to the next section which is going to be a data interpretation so we have also seen that a lot of questions are coming from data interpretation also so uh, let's see what are the tips focus on bar graphs line graphs pie charts and tables again if you have watched those videos i have covered one one question from each topic okay so you will have a good practice of these questions next is understand the percentage change and ratio speed calculation hacks are 
यूज अप्रोक्सीमेशन फॉर क्विक आंसर्स मेमोराइज स्क्वायर्स लाइक वन टू थ्री वन टू थर्टी क्यूब्स वन टू फिफ्टीन ओके सो दीज बेसिक थिंग्स शुड बी देयर इन योर माइंड ओके बिकॉज यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू अटैम्प जस्ट फॉर दिस कॉग्निजेंट राइट यू आर गोइंग टू अपेयर फॉर अदर प्लेसमेंट्स ऑल्सो सो दीज थिंग्स शुड बी देयर इन योर माइंड ओके नेक्स्ट इज Uh, one of the example is if a company's revenue increases from fifty thousand to sixty five thousand, what is the percentage increase? So simple is you have to like subtract sixty five thousand minus fifty thousand divided by fifty thousand multiplied by hundred will give you the percentage increase. Okay. Moving on to the compound interest. So for compound interest, the formula is A equals to P into one plus R by hundred whole to the power T. Now if you remember, we have also solved this uh, question on this formula in our one of our preparation videos. Make sure to check that playlist where the P is principal amount, R is your rate of interest, T is time in years, and A is your final amount after interest. So compound interest for different periods. Okay, we have the formula half yearly. So half yearly uh, compound interest you can calculate using this. Basically, you just need to update the time values. Okay, and quarterly four T. Okay. Next up, we have uh, like okay. Let's see the quick example on this part. So we have compound interest on ten thousand at ten percent per annum for two years. So how can you substitute the values? Your principal is ten thousand. Then one plus ten percent is the rate divided by hundred, and this is the years, which is time two. Again, solving all of this, you will get your compound interest. Okay. So usually you will get the questions in the form of word problems. You need to substitute the values and figure out the answers. Next is the important uh, topic that is probability. So in probability, if you see the formula is probability uh, formula is like favorable outcomes divided by total outcomes. Next up, we have probability of complementary events. For that, we have this formula: one minus p of a. Next up, we have independent events. So this is the formula for independent events. Next up, we have mutually exclusive events. So this is how uh, you can calculate your mutually exclusive events. Let's see the quick example for this purpose. What is the probability of getting an even number when rolling a dice? So favorable outcomes uh, when rolling a dice dice are two, four, six. Rest all are odds. So the total outcomes are going to be what? Uh, one to six, the total possible outcomes. So our formula we will substitute that is uh, favorable outcomes divided by total outcomes, and then we will get our probability as one by two. Moving on, uh, next is time and work. Okay, which is again important topic when it comes to your exam. So the basic formula for time is work done equals to efficiency into time. Okay, so if A completes a work in X days, then the efficiency of A will be one by X LCM method. So total work divided by total efficiency. Work and wages relation: more the people, more the wages; more people, less the time. Okay, you have to understand that. See, if there are more people uh, working on a, doing on a work or included in a work, the wages will be higher. And if there are more people you are taking in a work, then the less time it will be completed. Okay, so this is like usual relation. Let's see a quick example. A can complete a task in ten days. B in fifteen days. How long it will it? Uh, will they do the work together? So we will just calculate the efficiency of A, which is one by ten, and efficiency of B is one by fifteen. Total efficiency we will get as one by six. So the work will be completed in six days. Okay, this is like kind of short shortcut tricks. We have also discussed the long way of solving these questions in our videos. Okay, hope everything is clear so far. Now let's see game based aptitude. So now we see, uh, as I told you, right, the first part, thirty questions around around thirty questions is coming, not exact. So you will get thirty to forty minutes for this one. Now after that you will have six, five to six uh, game based aptitude questions. In that you will have multiple questions. Okay, you can skip some of the questions also in that. These are your interactive puzzles. Okay, and uh, what are the different categories of them? So there can be grid challenge. Okay, or switch challenge, motion challenge, digit challenge. What is a grid challenge? So you have to focus on pattern recognition and number replacement. Practice Sudoku like puzzles. I have already created a. a uh, video on this purpose also where we have practiced these kinds of sudoku like puzzles make sure to check that switch challenges test logical sequences practice matching puzzles motion challenge involves distance time and movement tracking practice speed distance time questions digit challenge number based puzzles like uh, addition subtraction missing numbers practice digit arrangement questions basically these like you know these are game based aptitude questions na these like you have to enjoy solving them these are fun to solve okay don't take it like uh, as a very tough thing or something okay once you will solve it you will yourself enjoy solving them and i have tried to create as much videos as possible on each topic so make sure that you prepare in the best possible way next is the logical thinking so in logical thinking we have dedu deductive logical thinking and inductive logical thinking i have created a complete separate two actually two separate videos on inductive and deductive logical uh, so make sure to check them in 
what are the actual main topics that are come covered in the deductive uh, logical thinking it has syllogism logical conclusion statement assumption and questions okay so you will have you will be having a statement and a conclusion based on that you have to figure out your answer for example the statement is all apples are red some red fruits are sweet and then you have the conclusion some apples are sweet the answer for this is going to be not necessarily true okay in the same way we will have questions around inductive logical thinking the topics under that comes are pattern identification series based reasoning okay so you will be given a series you have to tell what will be the next one in the series so hope so far it is clear to you and you have understood all the things whichever was like meant to the main aim was the video for this only so that you get a uh, habitual of what is going to come in your next exam okay some final tips from my end make sure that you manage time effectively focus on solving easy question first okay don't waste your time too much because you know in quantitative aptitude you really are short of time okay so if you focus too much on one question then your like remaining questions will be left out shortcut tricks if possible try to memorize like these formulas if possible but don't stress yourself in order to learn that okay next is your practice previous year questions it will help you understanding the patterns stay calm and confident don't like over prepare also believe in yourself everything is going to be good and for preparation material i will try to leave some links in the description box make sure to check them okay now this was about aptitude okay now what will be the next round so i've just taken one a screenshot uh, till now i have not posted any videos on technical assessment preparation but very soon i'm going to start uploading so make sure to check that playlist all those videos will be uploaded in that playlist only what is what is your round two round two is actually combination of aptitude and technical assessment but it happens in phases first will be you will be having your assessment on aptitude and then you will get your technical assessments okay so right now you are going under through this one and then after that you will be having this one which is your technical assessment now in technical assessment what is the concept you have to select your two clusters out of these three available ones okay like cluster one cluster two and cluster three and in all the three clusters this part is common okay that is query database ansi sql or using mysql so i'm going to come uh, post multiple videos on this one that is our uh, previous year mcqs questions and also preparation that is teaching videos on this part so make sure to check those videos then comes your coding part which is specific to your cluster which you have selected if you have selected java programming so you will get problems on that that is and then python and then c sharp we have three different clusters then the third part is coding and web ui in this part you will get your like uh, problems and mcqs okay you will be given a problem related to ui if you select cluster 2 you will get questions on cloud fundamentals mcqs again i'm going to post videos on all single topic make sure to check those so hope i have tried to cover as much as possible because of time shortage i have not spoken in detail about everything because i have already spoken a lot in one or the other videos so i am not digging deep into this video but i hope this video serves some purpose and you might found it helpful for all the questions please shoot them in the comment box i will take them all one by one and i try to answer almost 100% of the comments that i get so make sure that you ask your queries in the comment box Okay, that's all for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comment section. Join me on Telegram and Instagram and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet. So thanks for watching the video.